Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna talk about African violets. Funny enough, one of you guys asked me if I will ever have African violets again, and the answer is yes. I have just been sent some African violets leaves from my mother, which, as you might know already, she's the guru of African violets. She has some in her collection for 15 or 20 years already. She knows all about them. And I tried to take a few leaves last summer when I came here, but they didn't fare on transport so well. Lucky enough, I had a relative coming to visit and she brought me some leaves. Now, these leaves spent a few days in the box, but what my mom did was put damp cotton around the little stems of the leaves each individual leaf was wrapped like that. I don't know how long it took her, but yeah, she enjoys working with plants. So they all fared quite okay, but it is time to put them into more adequate containers to make my life easier, root them properly. I place them into these little jars, but it's really not ideal. So I'll show you how we like to propagate African violets or start a collection through leaves. It's really, really easy. I'll show you my mother's technique. Many people do it in many different ways. Some of them take the leaves, put them into soil directly, it didn't work all that well for me, so I'm just gonna do things like my mother does. So let's put on some gloves and get to work. Before we do that though, let's just prepare the stuff we need. So I went and I purchased some plastic cups. They are one-time use, you can find them in grocery shops. I wanted the transparent ones because I wanted to see the level of the water. I also wanted to see when the leaves started to root. It's a little easier to work with, particularly for a novice like myself. And I also have a sheet of a paper towel. It came from that roll over there and you'll see how we're gonna use it. So first of all, we need to prepare this towel as well. The purpose of this sheet of towel is to prevent the leaf from actually falling inside the water. You only need the stem of the leaf to be in the water, but the actual leaf itself should be on top. And some of these leaves are really, really tiny or they have really tiny stems. So I need the use of this paper. Here's what I will do. I'll split this in four and end up with four squares that will be equal. They don't need to be the best looking ones, but I wanted to make them equal so they don't actually fall inside the jar. So your aim is to make big enough squares that they can actually sit on top of the jar without falling in. So let's make a little test, see if we did this correctly. There we go. There is no way this one is falling into the jar. It's quite big. The next thing we want to do is to make a little hole smack in the center of this little paper. And that's why I went for paper towels. It's easy to make this little hole. In paper, it's kind of hard. It can also bruise the stem. I like the paper towel because it's less work and it's quite gentle on the little stems. So I'm gonna prepare all of these. I'm just gonna make a little hole in the middle. And by the way, don't make the hole too big because the leaf might fall through it. So this is all you need. And now here comes the glove part. What I'm gonna do is take the leaves, and as you can see, my mother sent me two of each, two leaves of each. It happens sometimes that one of the leaves doesn't make it. It's best to have two. I can already feel this leaf is a little mushy. This one is a little better. I hope they did fare well through transport. So what I will do is arrange the stems, as you can see, equal here, and then just put them through this paper towel and then I'm gonna place them on top of my glass. And I think you can already see where I'm going with this. I'm just gonna arrange them a little bit. Downside to paper is that if it gets too wet, it's gonna fall in, but that will dry out, it's okay. When you take the cutting of the leaf, it's not gonna be that wet, but I already had them in water, so you need to be careful with that. But the leaves themselves, they're not very heavy, and this can certainly hold them. So as you can see, only the stems are inside my little glass, so now let's put some water in the glass. Now you want the level of water to actually touch the stems, and the stems should be inside the water, but you don't wanna touch the leaves themselves or the surface of the paper or towel you're using. So I'm gonna show you the level when I'm finished. And there you go, as you can see, the stems are in the water and I will try to maintain the water level as such so the stems are not in air, but the upper part of the leaf is not wet. You don't wanna keep that part wet. And also be careful that you don't wet the paper you are using. Some people actually use plastic and that's a good idea as well. But this can also work if you're in a hurry. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this for all of the leaves and I'll come back when I'm done to show you the pictures of these African violets. The next thing that I'm gonna do is to number this glass because I have 13 of them. We do not have IDs. What were you? You were 10. 
We do not have IDs for the Cephricum violets, but I do have pictures that I will show you at the end, so you'll see how they actually look like. So if I manage to lose any of these, at least I want to know which ones I lost, because I might just repurchase them. Okay, so I had a better idea, because some of these uh, leaves are kind of short, and they were just drawing water and wetting that little towel. It would have happened with paper as well, so what I did was use some aluminium foil. And it was pretty quick. So let me show you the African violets that I have. I have pictures for all of them. This is number 13. I don't have the pictures in front of me, but I'll add them on the screen. This is number 10. I remember that my mother has all sorts of varieties and all sorts of colors and even combinations of colors. I'm noticing now that I do need to add a little bit more water to these jars and that's what I will. So, as I'm showing you the pictures and the violets on the screen, I just want to talk to you about a little something. As you might have noticed, I used gloves. And I have a very good reason to use gloves. So, my mother was cutting leaves for me to send me, and she noticed that one of her African violets is kind of melting. She looked dehydrated, and mind you, she has these violets for about 15-20 years. Um, or a little longer even. Well, not all of them, but most of them. So what she does is just regenerate that little stem and roots them again and they continue to live for on and on and on and on. I have to say she didn't really lose too many African violets in her life. She knows what she's doing and all the African violets are doing just great for her. They always bloom. You might know the video. If you don't know it, I'll add it in the info card down below. Actually, the description down below. So you see the African violet collection. So this was a little bit surprising for her, so initially she thought the roots were rotting and were dying, so she unpotted it to check the root system, and the root system was fine. What was not fine with the African violet was this. Do you see that purple ring? Well, now we know what to call it. It is called Fusarium. So somehow she got Fusarium into one of her African violets that lived for her for the past 15 or 20 years. And this is the first. Considering my outbreak of Fusarium, you know, it's not surprising. So I guess the infection occurred in the past few years that I kept African violets together with orchids. But there you go. It can pass to African violets and it can take over anytime. So maybe now you kind of understand why I made that video with I might lose my orchid collection. Do I know for sure I will not lose it? No. Do I think that maybe one day I'll wake up to a perfectly healthy orchid that suddenly just went bad? Yep, that's a real possibility actually. And there you go, African violets can be infected as well and that's exactly what happened to this African violet. It just started to die, all of a sudden, after 20 years of being okay. Now, Fusarium is quite the dreaded rot among orchids, and not only, actually, other plants as well. Throughout history, people lost entire crops of bananas and all of that. What does that mean to us? I'm not sure. But the worst thing about Fusarium is that it can transfer to humans in the form of small infections and other things that you can investigate in the link down below. I will not insist on this one. I'll just say one thing. Most of you guys are fully mature people. You are responsible for your actions and most probably you are well aware of what you're doing and the risks you are taking and you're assuming those risks. Life is kind of always about risks. So if you are a mature person, grown person, legally mature person, this is not for you. But let me just say one thing for my younger audience. Because I do see you are here and I'm so happy you are having this hobby. Let me just say one thing. The most important thing in this world is your health. And with maturity you have a lot of benefits, like you can do whatever you want. Yeah, that's true, kinda. But there's also a big downside. You are very, very responsible for what you're doing and you need to live with the consequences of your decisions. Nobody will be there to take those consequences upon themselves. That's the drawback. So if you are underage, please take it from me. There's nothing more important than your health. When you are working with orchids and plants in general, do me a favor and wear gloves. It's a shame to have a bad experience and a bad taste with this hobby because it is a wonderful hobby, 
But just like any other hobby, there are some risks. And whether we like them or not, we need to face them. When you are mature, you will be responsible for your life, for your actions, and you will live with those consequences and have a better understanding of those consequences. Now that you're young, you're not necessarily aware of what these consequences mean. And I'm not pep talking you, I've been there, I wish I was a kid again, but no, I'm a grown up and sadly whatever I do, it's on my head. So please listen to me when I tell you that health is the most important thing you have in life. And by you protecting your hands and your health, it will only benefit you. When you're mature, you can take the decision to not wear them by yourself because you will be able to live with the consequences of your decision. But now that you're young, it's really important for you to understand that some things are serious. And I'm sorry for being serious, but I really have to because sadly, there are people out there who will tell you what you want to hear, who will tell you a beautiful version of things. Life is not always beautiful. It is in your power to maintain beautiful and to maintain yourself happy and healthy. So if you're underage, please listen to me. Wear those gloves. If you're allergic to latex, you will find other types of gloves, other means of protection. Talk to your parents. Do not let this hobby take a turn for the worse simply because you are not careful. So that's what I wanted to say. Thank you for this. Sorry for turning it into something serious, but sometimes life is serious and I am trying to be responsible, encouraging information, encouraging being responsible in general with your actions. Okay, I think it's time to end. Thank you guys for watching. Are you excited for African Violets? I kind of am. I'll keep you up to date when these guys will root. We will pop them up. I'm thinking of a little something for them, but we'll see until then. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for daily orchid and plants videos. And don't forget to turn on notifications. It's that little button next to the subscription. It's a new feature YouTube has. And I think in the future, if you don't have them turned on, you will not be able to see videos from the people you are not turning them on for. Even if you're subscribed, the videos might just not appear. And with that said, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye! So the other days I saw some nubbins on my Renanthera and I was thoroughly happy. But then again, it's a root. I'm wondering at this point if I'm any good with Renantheras. Well, I'll give them a few more years, I have to figure them out. But for now, yes, let's enjoy the roots.